Welcome back to our second guide through CloudTalk's CallFlow Designer, a tool that helps you effectively manage your inbound calls. In the previous video, we introduced the first 14 actions for creating an efficient CallFlow. Now let's take a look at the remaining five. Step number one, create a conference room. We will start with conference rooms, a great asset when you want to invite multiple people to one call or if you need to securely record a specific session. Before adding a conference room to your call flow, you'll need to create one in CloudTalk settings. Click on Account in the left-hand side menu and choose the Conference button. If you have created conference rooms before, you will see them listed here. To add a new one, click on Add Conference Room and fill out the settings. Simply name the new room, then select a method for how participants will identify themselves before joining the call. You can choose from two options, Caller ID and PIN code. The PIN code is a fixed four-digit number generated by CloudTalk. It will appear in the conference room menu under PIN code. Now we have our new conference room created in CloudTalk, let's head back to the CallFlow Designer. Identify the desired place within your CallFlow where you want to insert your room, and from the menu, select the Conference option. Here, all you need to do is choose the newly created conference from the pop-up menu. Keep in mind that the conference room action must be the only action in the CallFlow Designer. So there are no other CallFlow Designer actions possible to add before or after it. Step number two, get and dial an extension. Let's move on to the get and dial an extension setup. Use it when a contact has a specific agent assigned. It's a simple way to make sure that the two are always connected. To set it up, choose a position where you want to insert the step and select Get and Dial an Extension from the CoolFlow Designer menu. Now you need to record, upload or select a sound. This is the message you want to be played for the caller once they reach the step. For example, further instructions. After the caller hears the pre-recorded sound, they need to input a four-digit extension number to select the desired agent. You can find the extension in the main CloudTalk menu under Agents, Internal Contacts. Remember that you can assign the extension only when creating a new agent, and you can't change this number later on. Assigning the extension in CloudTalk is very simple. In Agents, Add Agent within the main menu, locate the External Phone Number setting. Above it, you will see, do you want to set your own extension? Simply click on it and type your desired extension into the text box. If you don't set up an extension ID yourself, CloudTalk will automatically generate one for you. To finish setting up Get and Dial an extension in CallFlow Designer, decide how many seconds the call should ring to an agent for and click Confirm. Another interactive action available in CallFlow Designer is the Collect Input from Caller step. It helps you design a call route where the caller should input specific data, often needed in the following action. The input can represent a variety of information. For example, specific ID, order number, a password necessary for following call flow designer steps, like call routing to a particular agent. Furthermore, you can use collect input from caller for customer satisfaction surveys to collect valuable information about the quality of your service. Now let's take a look at Collect Input from Caller Settings. Locate a place in your flow where you want to insert the step and choose Collect Input from Caller from the CallFlow Designer Action Types menu. First, record, upload or choose a sound with instructions on what should be the expected input from callers. Don't forget to mention callers must confirm their input with the hash symbol, otherwise the input won't be selected. Then set how many seconds should the call flow wait on this step for the input. Choose a timeout length that gives callers enough space to insert their input. As an optional setting, you can choose your own regex, which is an abbreviation for regular input. Regex describes what the expected input from callers should look like. You can use numbers from 0 to 9, but there are also other options, such as this pattern for inputting a 5-digit order number when callers require information about their order. All they need to do is enter the order number via keypad. The system then locates it within the code strings and extracts the requested data. Once callers are finished entering the input, they can press the hash symbol on their keypad. It will move them away from the step even before the preset timeout finishes. Keep in mind that you can't use the hash character directly within the REGEX pattern field. It will cause conflict. Simply notify callers about this option in your initial sound recording. 
Finally, you can give the caller a chance to repeat the input if the first one didn't fit the expected pattern or if the timeout is reached. To do so, check the retry on invalid box in the settings. Data that call is inserted within the collect input step can be further referenced in the next steps. For example, you can design a call flow in which the caller's input is sent via HTTP request to another endpoint such as a CRM. To do this, you will need both a collect input from caller and an HTTP request step in your call flow design. Click on the plus symbol next to the collect input from caller step and from the menu choose HTTP request. In this setting, click on request body and select add new. You now see two fields, key and value. In order to reference the caller's input from the collect input from caller step in the HTTP request, you need to add a dynamic value to the value field. It looks like this. The number value represents an ID you see in the collect input from caller step box within your flow. If you are creating a follow-up HTTP request before initial save of previously created collect input, the ID can be a temporary one since the real one wasn't generated yet. For example, the number displayed on screen now. This number will be replaced with the real ID once the step is saved. In the HTTP request step, check the box to pass response if an HTTP response is needed for progressing through the call flow. If it stays turned off, the call flow will continue after the request is sent, regardless if a response was received or not. Step four, HTTP request. We've already mentioned a thing or two about HTTP requests, but let's take a look at it one more time. The HTTP request action replaced the external API and webhook actions within our call flow designer. The feature allows your request to reach a desired destination and trigger an action from a server. The HTTP request can be used in combination with other steps. We discussed collect input from caller already, but it may also be useful in an interactive voice response or IVR for short sequence. For example, the HTTP request lets you gather all actionable insights from customer satisfaction surveys. So you can train your staff and provide stellar service. After the caller fills out the survey, HTTP request forwards the collected data to either an external API or the CloudTalk API. Furthermore, you can, for example, use HTTP request to initiate SMS send out or gathering order information. Now let's take a look at how to configure HTTP requests. Start with choosing the desired position within the call flow. Click the plus icon and choose HTTP request from the action menu. The endpoint text field should contain the URL where the request will be sent. The following setting method determines what action the server should take when processing the request. Our call flow designer's HTTP request supports five methods, put, post, patch, get, or delete. Which method should be used is usually defined within documentation where you're trying to send a request. As a next setting step, you need to fill out the body of the HTTP request. We already peeked into it while talking about the collect input on caller feature, but let's look at it one more time. The body of the request contains data sent to an API in order to create or update a resource. It consists of key value pairs that are encoded in the JSON format. The data can contain strings, numbers, objects, arrays, and even Boolean values. As mentioned, you can define the value per each key within the request body. Apart from static values, it's also possible to use dynamic references that will automatically be filled out during the execution based on available data. You can insert references to contact attributes, some of the call details, numbers information, and it also allows you to reference inputs within previous collect input steps. Such reference is the same as we showed you earlier and is displayed on screen now. CloudTalk also provides you with an option to configure request headers containing additional information about a request, such as authentication credentials, data encoding, or type of content being sent. Again, by defining key and value. Step five, use condition splitter. The last action we will talk about in this video is the condition splitter, a small but important feature within CoolFlow Designer. It serves as a branching method. Every step in your call flow coming right after the condition splitter will have a new setting category, condition splitter settings. There, you will choose a specific set of conditions that have to be met for initializing the step. 
Using a condition splitter is great when you want to automate the filtering of incoming calls based on caller data. So how does it work? The condition splitter action step uses information about a contact stored in CloudTalk to further specify which route your calls will take. If you add a condition splitter to, let's say, call to agent or call to group steps, you can route calls based on different number properties or contact detail properties. These can be internal or external phone numbers, zip codes, contact tags, and more. Let's use contact tags as an example. Imagine that you have a single phone line for both your suppliers and your distributors. By using condition splitter based on contact tags, you can route the distributors to agents handling distributors and your suppliers to the group handling suppliers. Another example is condition splitter routing based on country code. You can let a French speaking group of agents receive all calls coming from French numbers. So how do you set up the condition splitter? Choose a desired destination, click on the plus icon and choose condition splitter from the action menu. Then insert either call to agent or call to group behind the condition splitter. Open the call to agent or call to group step and locate condition splitter settings. Click add new, choose a property tab, set operands and determine the value. In our contact tags example, you'd select property, contact, tags, and operand contains. Type a desired tag into the value text box. In the French country code example, you choose the following parameters. Property, call external number, and operand starts with. And into the value text field, enter the country code of France. Don't forget to add a failover action step that will be initiated when the call doesn't fulfill any of the preset requirements. In this case, when a client calls from a number that doesn't have the French dialing code prefixed. You can also use results of previous HTTP requests to route the calls. That's all from our second CallFlow Designer tutorial video. Now you're ready to start mapping the journey of your calls with confidence. And if you still need some extra help, no worries. The CloudTalk team is always here to help you. Contact our customer support through phone, email, or chat. Thank you for watching.